Okay, so the next step in our installation journey is using Homebrew to install a package called RBENV. What RBENV is, is a piece of software that allows us to install and manage multiple versions of Ruby on our computer. Now, in this course, we're only going to be installing just one version of Ruby, but the reason it's a good idea to install something like RBENV is in the real world, when you join a company, uh, it's typical to have multiple code bases and because they're developed with different levels of interest and different numbers of engineers on them, uh, it's likely that those different code bases will be running in different versions of Ruby. The same rules apply if you want to, for example, write code in some kind of open source project that is available for free on the web. It's possible that one team or one project may be running Ruby 2.7, another one might be running Ruby 3.0, another one might be really outdated in some company and running Ruby 2.5. And so having a uh, version manager that allows us to have multiple versions and easily switch between them uh, with a single command is kind of the most elegant and most real world way uh, to have Ruby set up on your computer. It doesn't mean we have to do it this way. We can just run a brew command, a homebrew command that is, uh, to install Ruby and get the latest version. But this is sort of the way it's done in the real world. And so I do want to give you that framework of thinking as a developer. Regardless, we can just start with this process and, and talk more about it as we proceed. So right here, I'm gonna use my brew command. This was installed in the previous lesson when we installed homebrew. And after brew, we can use install after a space. We saw this command in the previous lesson. And here I put the actual technology that I want to install. And in this case, we want R-B-E-N-V, all one word, all, all lowercase. There's one more thing I want to add here. And so we can add a space and also add Ruby dash build. And that is going to be the uh, software that includes all the available versions of Ruby so that R-B-E-N-V can talk to it and figure out where to download and get the version of Ruby that we ask it to install. So we can press enter. And this should be hopefully a pretty quick installation process. It's going to go to Homebrew. It's going to talk to its servers, download those technologies and automatically install them all within the terminal. That is sort of the magical beauty of Homebrew. It allows us to install a piece of software with one command, but we are not quite done yet. So let me clear this output right here. The next thing we want to do is run the command RBENV, which should be available. And then the word init, which means initialize. So this command is simply going to output a piece of text. And if it does, that is good because it means that RBENV has been successfully installed. But we need to do one additional piece of setup to ensure that every single time we launch our terminal application, we also initialize RBENV. You can almost think of it like an application on your computer. You know, there are certain kinds of applications where if you go into their settings, you can ask them to start up automatically whenever you log into your computer. We sort of want to do the exact same thing, but in our terminal. We want to tell the terminal that whenever it starts up as a program, it needs to load RBENV immediately so that we can start using it without having to launch it or write additional commands in the terminal to launch it. It just makes it a much more pleasant and enjoyable uh, de uh, developer experience. So you can see here, it says, you can load RBENV automatically by appending the following to this weird looking thing. This is just a file. It's actually a hidden file on a Mac because it starts with a, uh, a period at the beginning that indicates a file that is not going to appear in your finder window. That's why it's a hidden file, but it still exists uh, on your file system. And this file, which is the Z shell RC file is a file that the terminal will run automatically whenever it launches. And so what this output is telling us is if we add this command right here to this file, then RBENV will run or initialize every time we launch the terminal. So the first thing we need to do is to add this command to this file right here. Now, if you're a brand new programmer, this file might not actually exist yet on your computer because you have to manually create it. So what we can do here is write, write the command touch that is going to create a file on our computer. And then we want to reference that exact directory on the computer where it wants us to uh, locate that file. So right here, I'm going to put that tilde, that basically means the home directory, then a forward slash, and then I want to write the name of the file. So just that we understand exactly what is going on here, the touch command will create this file. It's going to call it .zshrc, 
in the home directory. Now, if you already have this file created, you don't have to worry because the touch command will not replace the existing copy if it exists. It's simply going to do nothing. So this command is one that you should feel comfortable running. It's not gonna accidentally delete or replace anything. It's only gonna create the file if it does not exist already. So I'm going to execute this command. And obviously the next step we want to do is we want to open this file in a text editor and simply copy and paste this command. And that's gonna be a one-time thing and we're never gonna to need to worry about it again. It's just gonna work out of the box whenever we launch the terminal. So I don't know what text editors any user has on their operating system. So what I'm gonna go with here is opening the file in text edit. Text edit is a text editor that is automatically available on Mac OS systems. It's not the most elegant or beautiful looking editor, but it gives us at least one option. So that's the one I'm gonna go with here. And to open it, you can write the command open. Then we're gonna reference that file. So we're once again going to write the location, the tilde forward slash dot zshrc. And then afterwards, I'm going to add a flag, which remember is just a customization option. It allows us to uh, run a command with a given configuration or setting. And we can add the flag dash E, and that tells the terminal to open this file with text edit, the default text editor on Mac OS. So when I run this, we'll see the uh, text edit uh, editor pop up. Now keep in mind, as a developer, I have a whole bunch of things in this file. If you're just starting out from scratch, it's likely that your file will be empty. That's totally fine, especially if you just created it with the touch command, it's gonna be empty, right? There's nothing inside it. But what we want to do, of course, is copy this command we have right here. I'm just gonna bring up text edit again. There it is. And I'm just gonna paste that command at the very top of the file. In fact, let me blow this up a little bit for you so you can see. I'm just gonna put it right here. Once again, this Z shell file is going to run automatically when the terminal starts up. So the terminal will run this command. This command will start up or launch or initialize the RBENV application. So we're automatically going to be able to use it successfully and correctly in the terminal without ever needing to worry about stuff like this again. All right, so make sure you save this file. So I'm going to press Command S to save it and then Command Q to quit it and that's it. So we now have RBENV uh, installed on our computer. We have the Xcode uh, command line tools to enable the installation of Ruby. We have Homebrew, which enabled us to install RBENV. The last and final step in the next lesson is going to be using RBENV to install the latest version of Ruby. So I'll see you there.